Hey, it's Rachel from All About Planners. In this video, I'm doing a review of the Mossery Planner. So you have the option of personalizing the cover. As you can see, I chose my name and choosing from a couple of different um, cover styles. Really like this cute um, gold foil fleck. Don't know if you can see that. Um, it looks really cute, simple, but still um, a bit more interesting than just a plain black cover like most planners these days have. So in terms of the size, it is about six inches wide by about eight inches high so I call it a medium size um, really good portable size but not so small that you can't fit anything in the planner itself you get an elastic band and it has this kind of weird binding that I've only seen on a few other planners where see how it's like that so it sort of has the cover outside of the coil instead of directly on the pages um, it is quite sturdy cardstock and you can still fold it back on itself so like this um, if you want to lay, lay it flat, however, it doesn't go completely flat like normal. See how that's still um, bent up a little bit? So I do find that a bit weird about the cover. Um, I'd probably prefer just the traditional one where they stick it straight on top of the wire binding. The other thing that you've probably noticed is that there is no tabs in this planner, which is quite unfortunate because the cover extends beyond the pages and they could have easily added tabs, but there's not any in there. So that's... Uh, definitely a con from my point of view. So at the front you have this pocket folder. It is quite flimsy um, paper, double-sided. This belongs to page and then they have some of these sort of random pages at the front. I'm not really sure what the purpose of this is, maybe to inspire you, but I don't think I would ever look at it to be honest. And then we go into um, some like, ins they're called an inspiration board, but I would call it like annual planning space. As you can see, the paper is quite thin. It's also a little tinged yellow. Um, I just, I, I worry about the paper quality of it. I will be doing a pen test. I'll have the link in the description box below to the blog post that will have that pen test because I am a bit worried about this paper. Then we go into the note section. So while there's no dividers, they do have these hot pink pages in between. So you could um, find it a bit easier. See how there's the other one in there um, to find what you're looking for since there are no tabs. So let's keep going past all the notes pages into the actual planner itself. So you've got a date at a glance for the current year and then next year. It is quite small as you can see. So if you're someone that needs glasses, definitely need to pull them out to read that calendar. Um, they have this section here, which I quite like this like highlights and they've got a recap for the last year, but I'm not sure if I'd use that. They've got this highlight section. I guess you kind of call it a future log if you do bullet journaling, where you can map out um, what you're doing for the year. I like that it's on one page and it's horizontal writing space. Plenty of room to write there. And then they go into more detail um, for each month with the little snapshot calendars, which I guess this would be more like the traditional future log for bullet journaling. And again, lots of nice horizontal space to write for each month. Really like those pages. You go into the months. So at the start of each month you get a notes page where you can map out what's happening. It's not structured, they just have these little like prompter questions and then an open-ended space for you to write whatever you like. And then we have the two-page monthly calendar. So a little bit different to uh, most calendars, you have this note space down the bottom so the boxes don't extend the full length of the page. And in addition to that you get this sidebar. And instead of a normal line sidebar, it's in um, like week numbers. So it's something a bit different that I've not seen another monthly calendar do. If you want to do like an overview before you then plan that week. It starts on a Monday and the weekly spread also starts on a Monday. So yay, it's consistent. Um, and then Sunday, for whatever reason, they've shaded it. Don't know why they wouldn't just shade both um, of the weekend days, but anyway. And instead um, of having like the numbers for the next month showing, they just grey out the boxes. So you could technically use that as extra planning space. And down the bottom here, you get a little checklist as well as the line notes. Overall, a very functional um, two-page monthly calendar. And the weekly spread, as you saw from my little peek before, has a Monday start. It does have these little dot points if you want to do list making for each day. In addition to some grid paper, um, like I mentioned before, the ghosting um, or like bleed through of just the um, printing is showing really badly. It's not so bad on this side of the page because it's kind of mirrored um, the design on the back but I do worry about the pen test. Um, and then for each week you get a little note section, a quote, and then the days to glance box, which I sort of don't understand why planners include that on each week. See how much space that's taking up. Um, I'd probably put like a, a habit tracker sticker over the top of that to make it a bit more practical. So you've got all the weekly spreads. And then as you can see, the month, it just continues seamlessly. So not like with the plum paper where they shade out the boxes and sort of double it up. It'll just continue streamlined into the next month. 
and then for the calendar um, see how it just continues it doesn't start those date boxes it doesn't show the date boxes of the previous month either now I'm just wanted to check if it does split the boxes in two or if it restarts the numbering no it doesn't okay so instead of splitting the boxes in two or restarting starting on the top row which I always find is the most practical solution um, they've opted to add an extra row down the bottom here I'm not particularly a fan of that and I don't know why you'd bother and there's not really any point in putting that week number there I would just put that up the top um, and restart the numbering because then you've lost like all that note space so it's good could be a little bit better though so continuing on through the rest of the planner at the back, oh sorry, I should point out that there is a review, oh that's not good, there is a review page for each month as well as that plan page. So plan, two page monthly calendar, all the weekly spreads and then the review page for the month and just those little questions if you wanted to read what the little prompts are. And then at the back you have a couple of notes pages. You probably noticed with this planner that the writing space is graph. Um, so I don't know if you're a fan of writing with graph then great but I'm sort of a bit iffy about it I prefer dot grid or just lined um, and sorry not it's not really a notes page it's more of just a year-end reflection page I mean they put notes there but anyway you can use it however you like that's just their suggestion and you do get a, another pocket fold at the back this one also feels quite flimsy I'm not really sure how much you could fit in that because it's got this weird like tab and then diagonal um, and it's only single-sided do get a built-in um, bookmark. It's not a flimsy ribbon like most planners. This actually feels kind of sturdy, the same as the elastic band to keep the planner closed. So overall, I do think it is a functional horizontal planner. You do get a fair amount of space to write, lots of like lined or, um, or graph sections. It's not too fat. It is quite um, lightweight, even though it has a hardcover. It still feels quite light. You could definitely take this with you. Um, it's practical to take it with you because it is a small portable size and you can also personalize it. Uh, one thing I did want to just point out is that the shipping is quite expensive. So if you live in Australia like I do, the shipping, I um, can't remember what it was, but I'll include it in the blog post. I just remember that it was quite pricey and the planner itself is a little on the pricey side as well. So keep that in mind. Um, if you don't want to spend a lot of money, you might want to go and look at an alternative um, horizontal planner. So I hope you found this review helpful and don't forget to check out that link in the description box below which will have the pen test for the planner um, and to subscribe. I usually do one or two planner review videos each week. I'll see you in the next one.